Hello, I'm Brian Whipker, Extension Floriculturalist at NC State University. In this podcast, we're going to discuss tips on using plant growth regulators. And in this podcast in particular, we are looking at pre-plant bulb soaks. So let's get started. So I'd like to thank Fine Americas, first of all, for supporting this podcast and making it possible. So when you're looking at pre-plant bulb soaks, why are we even looking at doing those? And the main reason is it improves the post-harvest quality of the, of the bulbs so they don't stretch, and also it keeps the longevity uh, for that plant. So in a very simplistic system, here's a view of some uh, tulips that we did uh, some treatments on in a plastic bag. But of course, in the case if you were looking at pre-plant bulb soaps, you probably use more of a five gallon bucket with the solution in there and maybe like a, a mesh strainer that you could put the bulbs in and then put it in the bucket for the given amount of time and then taking them back out, letting them drain and then setting them to the side. So when we did our trials and some research, Brian Krug did this as part of his degree. We did extensive trials on both hyacinths and tulips. In addition, we also looked at lilies and daffodils. So what are the key steps for doing this? So the protocol that really works well for if you're considering doing pre-plant bulb soaks is that you need to hydrate the bulbs by pre-soaking them in water for one hour, then letting them drain for an hour, then soaking the bulbs in that solution for five to 10 minutes, letting it drain off of that for, for an hour, and then potting them up. So the, this protocol works pretty well and it helps get more consistent results. And so the, the purpose of the hydration for that one hour is especially important for lilies because if the bulbs are drier, in the case of one shipment versus another, you're getting them hydrated and then when you put them in the solution, you're kind of evening out the results. So you don't have a lot of variation from one lot of bulbs that might be dry or on the drier side versus ones that aren't. You could have some uh, differences in results going on. So this helps improve the consistency uh, and it really is very helpful for lilies in particular. So here is an illustration of some work we did on Easter lilies, and I have to admit that pre-plant bulb soaks, uh, in, the, in particular with top floor, uh, top floor is very active, so it's, I, I guess I'm probably not recommending that, it, that you use it, but you can see here that if we did not uh, do a pre-plant bulb soak, the plants on, in particular on the left under the zero for both two part per million top floor and four part per million top floor, you can see there's a lot more control. And then as you increase the amount of soak time in minutes, we had a pretty consistent line go across on those pots. And so you took care of that variation because otherwise, uh, you know, look at the four part per million top floor uh, between no soaking, on the bottom left versus 60 minutes soaking, you can see a quite of a difference in the outcome of that plant. And so we wanna cut out those inconsistencies and that's why we're looking at doing a pre-plant water soak on those plants. The other factor there is the drain for one hour. This allows for the excess solution to drain back in the bucket so you're not wasting it and you can use it uh, for the next set of bulbs. So basically bringing it out and letting it drain and maybe you, 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 you have it uh, drain over a tub of some sort and so you can keep on treating other bulbs uh, along the way so it won't cl uh, slow you down. So then the other thing about the protocol is how long should you let the, the uh, bulb soak. And so really when you're you're looking at one to two minutes, you can have some inconsistencies and over 30 minutes things might change. So the sweet spot in, is in the middle, about five to 10 minutes is all that it takes. And so if you do it too short, you don't have that uptake and, and in some species longer than 30 minutes can be problematic. And you can see it here on the increasing uh, soak times at two part per million with top floor that uh, one to two minutes, the first two plants on the left uh, didn't have as much control. And then from four to 32 minutes, things were a lot more consistent. And finally at 64 minutes, there was uh, greater control 
of those bulbs. So, you know, that five to 10 minutes will help on getting, again, your consistency going. Uh, and again, when we're looking at top floor for Easter lilies, we did have a lot of variations and we're not necessarily uh, recommending that as a protocol, but the slides do a great job of showing what needs to happen with a pre-plant bulb soak on lilies. And then the protocol has drain for an hour. This allows for some uptake happening in that bulb, and then you can pot it up. So if you grab those bulbs and immediately pot them up, you have the chance of washing off some of that solution, and that's why we're not recommending that. You'll, you would have less control, so we want some uptake occurring. Now, especially for the consideration for reentry periods, uh, you can treat the bulbs like two days in advance before potting. So you can treat them all that would exit you from the reentry period, and then you can uh, uh, have the people pot the bulbs up so they're not going to necessarily be wet. And so that, that might be something really to, to consider. And so the other advantage is in the spring, if you're pulling plants up and you're busy and you're trying to get them drenched at the right amount of time or the right time frame, uh, that might be a hassle. In the case here, we're doing all these treatments in the fall before you're potting up the plant. So it might help a little on labor needs. Now there was a slight delay when you looked at uh, these pre-plant bulb soaps, but you also see similar delays occurring with the drench application. So it's really not a big deal from what we're looking at with these plants. The root growth was also similar. So here's an indication of the root growth. You can see a hyacinth untreated on the left, soaked on the right. The, those hyacinth roots look pretty well the same. And the same thing goes for the tulip roots untreated on the left, soaked on the right. So we did not really see any inhibition of rooting occurring with these pre-plant bulb soaps. So as far as concentrations are concerned, the rates are gonna vary by plant species and cultivars. And so the bottom line is, and there's so many cultivars out there, you're going to have to do some experimentation on your own and keep notes and determine what works best for you. So here's some work we did with top floor on specifically orange tiger lilies. And you can see we got a great response curve there. But on the other uh, colors, pink and yellow, they also looked at a, a needing about 10 to 20 part per million, that range in the middle that would work well. Uh, but the white cultivar in particular uh, was more responsive. It needed about half that rate or five parts per million. So you will have to do some type of investigation to determine what works best for you. Here's also some work that we did with uniconazole, uh, looking at stargazers. It was a 10 minute soak and really between a 25 and 50 part per million uniconazole application worked quite well uh, for controlling growth if that's what you wanna do. Now, if you go too high on that end, 400 part per million really did a nice job of nailing them and that was excessive. Uh, here's some work we did again on Easter lilies. It was effective, but the range of effectiveness was very narrow and the there was a lot of variability that went on. And that's the main reason why we, we chose not to continue on with the recommendations. But you can see that it, it worked very well for controlling hype of these Nelly White plants. Here's the work that Brian Krug did on uh, different soak uh, concentrations for Sue Magic, Bonsai, and Top Floor. You can see Top Floor, uh, its activity is not like bonsai, it's closer to Sue Magic, and so the, the lower rates would be what we would look at uh, for effectiveness to get the, the plants growing. So 30 parts per million uh, for Sue Magic, 100 for bonsai, and 25 parts per million worked well for top floor. The same thing goes for tulips for this particular cultivar, bonsai 50, 10 Sue Magic, 25-ish for top floor seem to be a starting point that you might want to consider for your own trials if you're going to be doing this. Tete-a-tete, -tete, 30 parts per million was effective and this controlled the stretch after uh, they came out of the greenhouse. So that worked very well for that. So here is a set of starting point recommendations for top four, paclobutrazole and uniconazole. And you can see there's hyacinth, lily, and tete-a-tete -tete and tulips there. And so the rate ranges are there. Start at some of these rates, 
do some experimentation, keep good notes and make adjustments for the cultivars you're using and how you do your protocols. We're not really recommending this protocol for caladiums, callas, uh, dahlias or Easter lilies, either from inconsistency with, with what was going on or in the case of dahlias and callas, uh, there's an increased risk of bacterial disorders going on with the plants. Uh, if you're putting in, them into a communal uh, bucket, that's probably not a great idea. So to summarize, pre-plant bulb soaks work well for improving the post-harvest quality and, and kind of cutting back on that stretch that you see. It's really cost effective. It doesn't cost much to treat a large number of bulbs and you can treat the bulbs in advance, let them sit and then pot them up with two days later. So it's something to consider that you might want to end up doing and, and do a small trial and see how well it works for you. So with that, we'd like to thank again Fine Americas for supporting the podcast, and I thank you for watching.